Not only will you learn how to solve any vernier caliper problem without any formula, whether it is for JE advanced or not, doesn't matter. You will also learn how to reinvent it because I think that's more satisfying. Like how would we reinvent the whole thing? What's the logic that goes behind it? Uh, a caliper would look somewhat like this. So ideally, the when you have no object kept over here, the zero of the moving scale would exactly coincide with the zero of the main scale. But when you keep an object over here, when you keep some object that you want to measure, something like this, then notice that your zero of the caliper would move by the same distance as the length of the object. So the whole idea is to now calculate how much the zero has moved. And if you look at it, and by the way, let's imagine we don't know anything about vernier calipers, how they are built. Just by looking at this, we can logically think about uh, measuring this. The whole idea is, the question is, how much has the caliper moved? Let me zoom out a little bit, okay. How much has it moved? Now, if you just look at the main scale, you can immediately see that it has moved by, so it has moved to 1.567 plus something. You know, it's between 1.7 and 1.8. So I know my measurement is between that. So it's going to be, the way I'm gonna write this is, it's gonna be 1.7 plus something extra, right? I'm gonna call that as X. The whole goal is to find what that extra distance is so that I can add one more digit, one more decimal and make my um, measurement more precise. So how do I figure uh, this part out? And that's the part where a lot of formulas are given, like you take the least count, you do this, you do that, but you don't have to do anything, okay? Let me show you how I think about it. So here is what we need to calculate the extra distance, which we're gonna call as X, which we have called as X, right? So this is our X. So how do I figure out how much X is? All I do now is go and look at where the vernier scale and the main scale coincides. And that coinciding is happening over here. Before this, it doesn't coincide. After this also, it doesn't coincide. And you can see that this is where it coincides. At this point, you can say, Mahesh, Mahesh, wait. If you don't know how to use the vernier calipers, if you're just using logic, why would you think about coinciding in the first place? Here's why I'm thinking about coinciding in the first place. If I know that here it coincides, I can now use algebra and I can say that this distance, this distance, whatever this is, is exactly equal to X plus this distance, right? Right? I can only do that where it's coinciding. Over here I can't do that because the lower distance is larger than the upper distance as you can see. And I can't do that over here or over here because the lower distance would be smaller than the upper distance. So I can only do that where it's coinciding and that's the reason why I'm looking at it. This is it. Now how would I calculate what this distance is and what this distance is? All I need to know is what is the spacing. If I know the spacing, I'm done. Okay, and how do I calculate what the spacing is? For that, the manufacturer has to tell me or I have to look at the question. Now, we look at the question. All right, so let's go back to our question. And I'm not solving this problem, I'm solving a, a general problem, but then we can solve this problem. Okay, in the question it says, the smallest division on the main scale of the caliper is 0.1 centimeter. All right, so it's giving me the smallest distance that's given to me as 0.1 centimeter. So let me do that, let me go ahead and write that over here. So that this distance, I'm gonna, let, let me write it over here. So it's a little farther away from our main calculation. This is given to be 0.1 centimeter. Since I know this, now I can figure this out by counting. All right, what about the vernier scale? What is this spacing equal to? All right, for that again, I'm gonna look over here. It says 10 divisions of the vernier scale corresponds to nine divisions of the main scale. So 10 of the vernier equals the nine of the main scale. So let me just write that down over here. 10 equals, this is equal to nine of the main scale. But I know that in my main scale, each one is 0.1. So nine of my main scale will be 0.9. So I know that this whole spacing is 0.9 centimeters. So what will be a single spacing? Well, 0.9 divided by 10, because this is divided into 10 equal parts. So this single spacing will be 0.9 by 10, 0.09 centimeters. And if you are like me, the confusing part or the part that is difficult over here is these decimals, like, you know, 0 0.09 or is it 0 0.9, 0 0.009? That's the only part which I find at least, I don't know about you, but I definitely, even today, I hit. Now I know the spacings, I can go ahead and calculate, okay? So since each spacing is 0 0.1, what is this total distance? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 into 0 0.1, this total distance is 0 0.6 centimeters. Okay, what is this distance? Well, I know the spacing is 0.09, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times 0 0.09, nine, six are 54. So six times this becomes 0.54. This is where I need to be careful. So it's 
five four centimeter. And so what is X going to be? 0 0.6 minus 0 0.54 centimeter. And so that's going to be 0 0.06 centimeter. So this will be 0 0.06 centimeter. And I've calculated, I am done. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna add, add that over here, this is 0 0.06. And therefore our total answer is going to be, write that over here, is going to be 1.76 centimeters. Look, no formula, no least count, no nothing. Didn't have to do anything, just the power of algebra. Now, can you use the same power of addition and quickly, even if you know how to solve this using formula, probably you solved it. Can you use the same logic and solve it one more time? All right, let's do it. So here's how I would quickly do it. I know that this is 3.1 plus something. 3.1 I can see zero is over here plus something. And I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring the zero error as of now. Okay, let's not worry about that. Plus something. And what is that something equal to? For that, I'm going to look at where it coincides. And you can see here only it coincides. Okay, so I know this distance. So I'm gonna just basically say that X, I'm gonna consider these three distances. So this distance is 0.1. That's given to me in the main scale. So that is 0.1. This distance would be directly just 0 0.09. I don't have to count much because the first one itself coincided. And so what is this equal to? 0 0.1 minus 0 0.09, so it'll be 0 0.01. And so I have to add 0 0.01. And so this would be 3.11 centimeter, ta-da. I know it's, it's satisfying to do it this way. Okay, but here's the part where it could be confusing and this is the JE part over here. The zeros are not coinciding, all right? The whole idea, if you look back at our caliper, the whole idea was that when it is over here, the zero coincides and then everything would work out. But now the zero is not coinciding. So what do we do? What do we do? Okay, here is again, there are additional formula which talks about zero error, positive zero error, negative zero error, blah, blah, blah. Again, can be very confusing. Let's not do it that way. The first thing I want us to think about logically is because the zero is not coinciding, our actual answer would be, would, you, would it be more than this? or would it be less than this, okay? There are multiple ways to answer this logically, but try to answer this yourself logically without using any formula. Okay, here's how I think about it, okay? Now, in this scale, because my zero is not coinciding, I ask myself, if I had to make it coincide, what would I do without moving the vernier? I am not gonna move the vernier. I'm gonna keep the vernier as it is. If I had to make it coincide, how would I correct it? I would change the paint. That's what I would do. I would paint it again, right? So I would remove this and I would repaint it. And I repaint it, the whole thing would be painted slightly to the right. This is how I would, so let me do that. This is how I would paint it. Does that make sense? See, I would shift the whole thing to the right by repainting it, okay? Now, if I shift the whole thing to the right, I mean, even here, it would have shifted to the right because it's the same vernier scale. So here also the painting has moved to the right and you can see automatically, immediately I know that that means whatever measurement I got right now is not the correct measurement. When I correct it, my measurement will be larger. It's gonna be more than what I actually got. And so I know, again, without worrying about any formula, I know that my answer is more than 3.11. And so if I take it back. So the last question is how much more? How much more than 3.11 it is? And for that, I just need to figure out exactly how much this distance is, okay? If I know what this distance is, then I can shift the whole paint by that much distance. The whole measurement over here will also shift to the right by that much distance and that much gets added, okay? And this is the last part. And again, this part also you can calculate logically using the same method. Can you pause and think about calculating this? And this is the part where I think a lot of people went wrong while solving this problem. <sighs> okay, let's do this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look at where is my coinciding happening? The coincident is happening over here. So I'm gonna say this entire distance, this entire distance is equal to this time, this is X my. This is the part that I want to calculate. So this is my X. This time my X comes on the main scale. It doesn't matter where it comes. The whole idea is to just use algebra, right? So X 
plus this distance exactly equals this distance. And then I'm done, okay? Now what is this distance? Well, I already know that each spacing is 0.09. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 times 0 0.09, oh, this also is 6 again, okay? 6 times 0 0.09 is 0.54. And how much is this? How much is this distance? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 0.1, so this is 0.5. So how much is this x equal to? How much is this? Well, total is 0.54. Out of that, I remove 0.5. What remains is 0 0.04. So this is 0 0.04 centimeter. And I think a lot of people made a mistake thinking that the zero error is 0 0.06 for some reason, I think. I don't remember the formula, but I know that people have made that mistake. And But you can see, we don't have to worry about that. And so that's how much I would shift the whole thing to the right, and therefore, my whole thing would get shifted to the right by 0 0.04. So I add 0 0.04 and I, I'm done. I'm getting 3.15 centimeter and that is my answer. Ta-da! Okay, now comes the even more interesting part. Why did we build the vernier scale this way? The 10 divisions of vernier scale corresponds to nine divisions of the main scale. Why does it all work out that way? So let's imagine, let's put ourselves in the shoes of vernier and let's think from first principles over here, okay? All right, so here's our new scale and uh, I don't have anything over here. Let's think about how we would rebuild this from, from scratch. So the first thing I would do is ask myself, what is the smallest division I want my scale to be able to measure? This is called the least count. So for example, if the vernier scale did not exist, then the smallest division I can measure is just 0.1 centimeter. That's the current least count. That's the least count of your any scale that you have. Okay, but I don't want 0.1 centimeter. I want to measure even smaller distances than that. I want my least count to be somewhat, let's say some, I want my least count to be not 0.1 centimeter, which is the least count of the main scale, but I want it to be 0 0.01 centimeter. I want it to be able to measure 0 0.01 centimeter. So how do I do that? Okay, I don't know anything about how I build over here. How do I do that? Here's the thing, here's the logic. The logic is I'm gonna go over here, okay? And I'm gonna make a marking which is 0 0.01 centimeter to the left of this. Think about why I marked that way. Why did I mark 0 0.01 centimeter to the left of this? I marked it that way because now if I move this by 0 0.01, 0 0.01 centimeter, it exactly coincides. Right? So now I know when it coincides, this has moved by 0 0.01 centimeter. And therefore I know that the measurement over here is 0 0.01 centimeter. And that's the logic. That's all there is to it, okay? Now, if I have to put a marking such that it is 0 0.01 centimeter to the left, how much should this distance be? Well, it is this minus 0 0.01 centimeter, right? Whatever this is, I have to subtract 0 0.01 from that and I have to mark it over here. This I know is 0 0.1, let me write that. So this I know, 0 0.1 centimeter. So this would be 0 0.1 minus 0 0.01. So how much will this be? Ah, it, this will be 0 0.09 centimeter, that's, why this spacing happens to be 0 0.09 centimeter. Okay, where would I put a next mark? I would put the next mark with an equal spacing, right? I would put another mark, which is like equally spaced over here, another 0 0.09 centimeter. Now, when I do that, this distance becomes 0 0.02 centimeters, twice the least count. Can you see that? Think about it. If this is also 0 0.09, this is also 0 0.09, total is 0 0.18. This is 0 0.2, 0 0.2 minus 0.18 is 0 0.02. And if this is confusing, it's fine because decimals are confusing for me also, but you can see that this will be 0 0.02. Similarly, so what does that mean? That means when I move this by 0 0.02, the second one will coincide. So when the second one coincides, I know this is 0 0.02. And that's how we keep on building. When I build the third one with the same equal spacing, 
and I build the third one, this distance happens to be 0 0.03, three times the least counterpart. And when I move this and this coincides, I know this has moved by 0 0.03 centimeters and so on and so forth. And that's how I keep on making the marks. That's how I keep on making the marks. And so that the, the, the question then is, how many markings do I keep on making like that? I have like, you know, where do I stop? Well, see, here it is 0 0.01 apart. Here it is 0 0.02. 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, eventually it will be exactly 0 0.1 apart. And then eventually someone, some last marking will coincide with the main scale. When that happens, I stop because the next which I do will be a repeat of this because see, it will be a repeat of what happens. So I just have to keep marking until it coincides. Now, how do I find which marking will coincide so I can stop doing it? Well, for that, we can just do a little bit of math. So the way I do this is, see, I know now that um, my one vernier scale division, or I'm just gonna put as one V, I know that is 0 0.09 centimeters. Okay, all right. So how do I know how many should I do to, to make sure that something will coincide? But because this is 10 times more than the least count, I'll keep multiplying by 10 and this will make sense. Just, just see, I multiply this by 10. If I multiply this by 10, I'll get this to be 0 0.9 centimeter. And I know that means the 10th division will coincide with 0 0.9 and 0 0.9 is over here. So I in instantly know this is the last one. The 10th one will be my last one. After this, everything will change. For if this was not true, if I did not get 0 0.9, if I got 0 0.93 or something, then I know that it will not, then I have to multiply it by one more 10 and we'll keep doing that until we find exactly where it coincides. And that's why we say that 10 division coincides with nine divisions of, of the one scale coincides with nine divisions of the main scale. Does it all make sense now? This is how we would rebuild our own uh, vernier scale. And I want you to take a shot at this now. Let's say we want to build a different vernier scale, a vernier scale which had a least count of not 0 0.01 centimeter, but it had a least count of 0 0.03 centimeter. Okay, I'm saying for some reason, I have a weird request as a customer. I only want, I don't want to measure 0 0.01. I want to be able to measure 0 0.03 and then 0 0.06 and then 0 0.09. I want to be able to measure only 0 0.03. So can you pause and think about how this whole thing would change? How would you build your vernier scale? Use the same logic. All right, so I'll just get rid of this. Let's start from scratch again. I would do the same thing. See, what I would do is I would first make a marking which is 0 0.03 to the left of this so that when I move this and this coincides, I know for sure that this is 0 0.03. So my least count has happened, okay? That's how I would do it. But if I want to move this to the left, 0 0.03, how much would this distance be? Well, this will be 0 0.1 minus 0 0.03. 0 0.1 minus 0 0.03 is 0 0.07. So my vernier spacing would be 0 0.07 centimeter. And I'll keep on doing this. When I do the next one, again at the same spacing, you will see that this will be twice the least count, 0 0.06. And so it'll keep on happening. Okay, now, how do I know where and how many vernier, how many divisions I should have? How do I know that? Okay, I'll do the same thing as I did before. So. I know that one vernier scale equals 0 0.07 centimeter. Now, if I want something to coincide, my last one to coincide, I'll multiply this by 10. So when I do 10 vernier scale, I'll get 0 0.7 centimeter. So I know my 10th one will coincide 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. I know my 10th one will come over here. So this will be my 10th. And so if you were to build this, we would say, hey, 10 VSD equals uh, seven MSD. This is how we would call it. And then we would manufacture it and we would just like send it away. And you can also now see why you can, uh, hopefully the formulas make sense. We can see why people say least count. Why do people say least count equals MSD minus VSD? Why do people do that? Because that's how you build your vernier scale, right? 0.1 minus this gives you the least count, this distance, because that's how you built it. 
you started with the least count and you you shift it to the right and that's how you built it. And now this hopefully this formula makes sense, but we don't need a formula anymore. Time to put it to the test. So we have a new vernier scale in which the 10 vernier division equals 11 main scale divisions. Completely different vernier scale. Nobody would even build a scale like that, but this is what you would get in JE problems, okay? <laughs> What would, what is this reading going to be? Okay, that's the first question. The second question is, is, is what's the least count of this device? If you use least count is one MSD minus one VSD, you will find that that will not work. It'll give you some negative answer. Does that make sense? Um, does it mean that this has no least count? It should have, every device should have, every instrument should have a least count. There should be some smallest measurement that you can make. So. What will be the least count of this? Uh, let me know in the comments what answer you get over here and why you get it and yeah, bye.